going on? We are back in black in the building. Shout out to everybody out there at the Corp Plantation. Doing what they need to do to survive. Man, 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 it's a sad day. This week that just passed and this weekend. But before we get into that, uh, did Jesus come back? Ah, oh, damn. Man, let me tell you something, man. Shout out to everybody at the Corp Plantation again. Or if you're at church teaching Sunday school or getting ready to sing in the choir. <laughs> Shout out to you. We're going to do roll call. Let's do it. Shout out to the homegirls, Miss Tanya, uh, Tanya out there in Arizona. Uh, Shout out to all my siblings in Las Vegas, Nevada. Doing what we de- need to do to survive. <clears throat> Shout out to the homegirl Jerica as well in Las Vegas, Nevada. That's, hey, it ain't easy doing it in Vegas. Let me tell you something. For all you motherfuckers that want to just run to Vegas and think you're going to set up shop, yeah, right. It is not easy. And Vegas is expensive as a motherfucker. But anyway, shout out to everybody out there in Las Vegas, Nevada. I got to say it. Shout out to the homegirl, Shawnee. Philly is definitely in the building. Shout out to the homegirl, Erica. Florida, a.k.a. Florida, is in the building. Shout out to my brothers, <clears throat> my OGs, David for No Compromise, Joja in the building. Shout out to my brother, James Youngblood, Texas, is in the building. And then shout out to the homegirl, Melina, North Carolina, a.k.a. North Kakalaka, is definitely in the building. Man, 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 let's do it. Let's get into it, man. R.I.P. To my brother, the legend, the myth, O.J. Simpson. R.I.P. to that brother. Let's get it. Man. Man, what is going on, man? Man, we look, man, we lost our brother O.J. I like how O.J. was on the uh, It Is What It Is podcast with Cam and Mace. That's one of my favorite pa- podcasts. Cam and Mace, I can listen to them. I can listen to them all day. They be have me rolling. Especially when Mace be like, yeah, I didn't want to do that, Cam. Because <laughs> that's not what it is. <laughs> I just love listening to them brothers because they keep it a buck. OJ was definitely on their podcast. First of all, let me tell y'all something. O.J. Simpson was a legend, and all those dominant society people loved his dirty draws and wanted to be around him. All those white men wanted him to fuck their wives, and they was okay with it. And O.J. probably was doing that. And Nicole Brown Simpson, and, and the facts came out, these are the facts, she was a dope fiend. And wanted to fuck everybody in the NFL, including Marcus Allen and everybody else. She was not trying to take care of them kids. And she had a dope fiend problem. And we already know where this is going. And look, the Goldman still think they're going to get some money. You ain't getting no money. So you can fucking forget it. You ain't getting no money. You go find the real killer. Shit. Man. Go find the real motherfucking killer. They get on my fucking nerves. And people don't even know. <clears throat> For all you. Shawnee, Erica. Uh, us, you know, Las Vegans, we know this already, but uh, David from No Compromise, James Youngblood, check this out. This is going to fuck y'all up. I'm going to give y'all a little, uh, a little golden nugget here. Okay, remember when OJ was in Vegas trying to get his shit back? Okay, so Ve- OJ was out here in Vegas, you know, and trying to get his shit back, and they set him up, right? Do y'all remember that judge, Jackie Glass? That put him in prison? Well, guess what, you guys? Jackie Glass's husband is Steve Wolfson, who was the councilman in Summerlin. And now he's the district attorney. Attorney. He was he was segueing into being the district attorney when they were presiding over the OJ case. Jackie Glass's husband is Steve Wolfson, who's the DA in Las Vegas. So you don't think that was all done by design? Warren, how do you know that? You know why? Because I worked at a recreation center called Veterans Memorial Leisure Center. You can Google that. That is in Summerlin, right next to Palo Verde High School on Pavilion Center Drive. 
Guess what's guess who presided over that war? Wolfson. Guess whose wife put OJ in prison? Jackie Glass Wolfson. If you don't tell me by now, we don't know that they are on cold and the dominant society is very aware of what they do. Y'all done lost y'all damn mind. So that's, I just want to give y'all a little tip. Be like, damn, why that lady give him? Man, that was by design. Her husband was going to be the DA. You don't think that looks good for her husband that she put OJ in prison? And the husband is trying to be the district attorney? Yes. Yes. We, we, we used to see Steve Wolfson all the time at that damn, at that uh, rec center. And he wasn't shit, never wanted to speak, and, 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 and wasn't nice enough. He, he was the typical district attorney that didn't give a fuck. So, yes, that's him. And it's all relatable. And if you remember Jackie Glass, she had her own TV show. People just didn't know because she hyphenated her name and left off the Wolfson. Oh, yeah. This goes really deep. Remember when she presided over his hearing and she said, this has nothing to do with your previous trial. Then if it has nothing to do with it, why are you bringing it up? They knew what they was doing. They knew where they were fast forwarding OJ's life. They knew that. But they did it anyway. That's why you're getting people's true feelings now that OJ's gone. But I don't give a fuck what y'all say. He didn't do it. And let me tell y'all something. Why don't y'all keep that same vitriol towards the lady that had Emmett Till killed? That was able to live a wonderful life, peace, and tranquility. And she didn't give a fuck about getting no niggas killed. So I don't want to hear that. And I'm so sick of people talking about, oh, was slavery so long ago? Okay, if slavery was so long ago, then I want y'all to have... Y'all tell that to the dominant society Jewish community. Because what happened to them was earlier than what happened to foundational black Americans. But we still remember that. And they never let you forget it. So since they never let you forget it, how come when it comes to our plight... We have to forget it. So I don't want to hear that. You like, Warren, man. Because I, I got another subject. This sister, uh, Sade or Sade Robinson, murdered by that dominant society motherfucker. And I got video to play in, in, in uh, footage and in, in, uh, audio so y'all could hear what was going on. This man then cut her up and did all like... Let's get into this point, sisters. When y'all go out on dates, not only do y'all need to have that thing on y'all, y'all need to have somebody in the background watching and following y'all around just in case if a motherfucker do some shysty. And they always trying to frame this narrative that black men are so volatile. Have y'all ever watched ID, Investigation Discovery? Look, for six months, I watched every episode of ID. Do y'all know white Women and black men, they the most volatile motherfuckers. Especially all oh, these white women, they have put arsenic in your goddamn medicine. Then the, then the white men, oh, they don't give a fuck about killing you slowly. They just kill you. I watched episode after episode about how white men like, oh, I got another bitch and I don't want to divorce this bitch because she's going to take all my money. I'll just kill a bitch. This is what the dominant society does. Black folk, black men, it's like, fuck it. We'll just go find another bitch, pay this bitch child support. Or go live with our mama. Fuck it. We ain't gonna just kill a bitch. Because niggas ain't trying to go to jail for killing a bitch. Every now and then we'll do it. But for the most part, we don't do that. So that's why. It's so funny they paint OJ to be this volatile person. <clears throat> but they never looked at, hey man, this lady's a dope fiend. And when you owe the drug cartel money and shit like that, things can end very badly for you. They played the conversations of OJ getting on Nicole Brown Simpson's ass because she was high as a kite around those children and didn't give a fuck because she was a fucking dope fiend. But her family and everybody wants to paint this image, like frame this image that, oh no, she didn't do any of these things and all that. If OJ was fucking everybody, that's why you notice they didn't bring up how OJ was fucking everybody because everybody was giving their wives to him as a tribute because he was OJ. Yeah, the, the Kardashians giving up pussy too. All those women around him was giving up pussy. All those men was like, go ahead, you, that's OJ, you fuck him. Now you better not fuck our next door neighbor, but that's OJ, so you go ahead and give him some pussy. Cause he was OJ. Y'all think that just started happening? Stop. But we gonna play some audio about this sister. Cause I want everybody to have the same energy about this sister that they have about everybody else and about OJ. So here we go. Let's get it. Man, this is ridiculous. 
<clears throat> I was just thinking that whole thing. I was like, man, that's messed up, man. And that's just this, this sister went on a date. And this brother, <clears throat> this brother OJ, he's still getting persecuted. And he was found not guilty. And he's still getting persecuted. But go find the real motherfucking killers. Why y'all doing all this sucker shit? Because this shit is ridiculous. That's why I'm like, man, god damn, man. <clears throat> Excuse me. Man, I just, I'm like, damn, man. I can't believe they would still be doing that. So let's get it. Court documents say Anderson and Robinson were meeting up for that first date on Monday, April 1st. They started at a Menominee Valley bar, the Twisted Fisherman, before heading over to Dukes on Water, which is in downtown Milwaukee. That phone is then traced to right here, Anderson's home at 39th in Oklahoma, and we know Robinson was never seen again. This new exclusive video appears to capture the moment investigators took Maxwell Anderson into custody near his home at 39th in Oklahoma following a whirlwind investigation uh -huh. that started April 2nd. Milwaukee County 911 dispatch received a call from Cudahy Police Department regarding a severed leg at one. This man then cut up her body. He did a, he did a motherfucking Jeffrey Dahmer. Dahmer. Look. When y'all go on these dates with these other racial groups, have somebody in the background. I'm telling you that right now. Don't go on no dates by yourself. Have somebody. You better have your cousin, your sister. It don't everybody got a messy relative that don't mind being nosy? Well, get that messy really messy relative that don't mind going somewhere and then sitting down and watching and acting like they just eating something and they just end up popping up everywhere you pop up. And if that man be like, damn, then they might be following us. And then that's when you say, yep, they might be following us. I don't know. Oh, well, just in case that motherfucker know, <clears throat> because guess what? That messy relative, like, can get out and be like, don't you go in that house with that man. And if you go in that house with that man and you don't come out, that person should be like, yeah, my cousin was on a date with this white man. And now she ain't came out the apartment. I don't know if he a goddamn vampire. He could be Lucian, Victor from the underworld. I don't know Jeffrey Dahmer's uh, third generation cousin. I don't know who the fuck that white man is. But that white man got my cousin in there and she ain't came out in two days. So y'all better go in there and see what's going on. And then put it on YouTube and Facebook. That'll make they ass fucking come up out the pockets and see what the fuck is going on. Vermont Park. Subsequently, a Milwaukee police officer who was aware of our investigation raised the possibility that the leg may be related to a missing person investigation that they were conducting. That missing person, Sade Robinson. A criminal complaint released Friday says investigators used her cell phone records to follow her movements the night before on April 1st for what was supposed to be a first date with Anderson. After He went there to kill her. Y'all need to understand that. He went there to kill her. Dinner and drinks, Robinson's phone was tracked to Anderson's home for three hours. An hour later, her phone pinged at Kern Park. And then... Yeah, because he cut her up, killed her, and then tried to dismember her everywhere. Now, this is what this motherfucker did. Following a drive across the city, <clears throat> it's last trace to Warnemont Park, the same spot investigators found that severed leg. April 2nd, the Milwaukee police found Robinson's car torched near 31st and Lisbon her clothes and phone in the trunk. 12 News has since learned footage from a city bus near that time and place captured Anderson. In the following days, police and Robinson's family searched that Walnut Hill neighborhood and found a foot and human flesh. MPD returned to the area when Miss Robinson's family located her blanket. At this time, detectives located additional human remains. DNA results on the foot are pending, but DNA results confirm the severed leg is Robinson's. Do you know how she died? Can't comment on that. Investigators also not detailing where the... I know how she died. The system of racism, white supremacy killed her. That's how. Another race soldier in training killed her. That's how, because he purposely went there to kill her. That's why you be first dates. You better have somebody with you. Brother, cousin, sister, auntie. <clears throat> somebody and make sure they had that thing on them. See, let me tell you what's going to happen. When the dominant society comes around us and they know that we don't have no protection, they're going to do whatever they want. But if the dominant society comes around and you got a brother or a cousin or you got gang, gang ties or something, a motherfucker show up and be like, hey, homie, I'm going to tell you right now, we're not doing that bullshit. So if, if, if it's one hour and I don't hear from my sister, it's going to be a problem. 
It's going to be trouble, trouble. Homicide occurred, a possible motive, a weapon, or what they found when they searched his home, other than blood in a bedroom and blood on the walls leading to the basement. Law enforcement sources told 12 News investigators did find what was described as a sex dungeon. What did you find inside that home, specifically in the basement? Cannot really say that at this time. A hand of the sheriff uh -huh. they are reviewing other missing person cases to see if there's any connection to this one. Right, Patrick, they're looking for any link to this case. But today, the sheriff did say right now they do not have any evidence that leads them to any other victims. Anna Hilliard at 39th and Oklahoma in Milwaukee tonight. All right, let's see what they say right here. R.I.P. to Sade. Freedom is why. <clears throat> R.I.P. to Sade, man. Man. Such a beautiful, gorgeous sister, too. And this motherfucker want to do that. 33-year-old Maxwell Anderson goes from a person of interest to the man charged with the death of 19-year-old Shade Robinson. It's a gruesome case that started 10 days ago with the discovery of a human leg in Warnemont Park. And we do have team coverage for you this morning. Zoe Chapalo wow. learned more about the in-depth investigation by Milwaukee law enforcement. But we'll start with Fox 6's Durante Matthews, who was in court for Anderson's appearance this morning. And Durante, you also spoke to the family of Shade Robinson. I did, and it was a very, very difficult day for her family, the family of 19-year-old Shade Robinson in court today. Many of them were in tears before walking out of court, and a lot of them were shaking, sitting behind the man who's accused of killing Shade, and that's, as you mentioned, 33-year-old Maxwell Anderson. Now, his charges were read in court today. Now, that includes first-degree intentional homicide, mutilating a corpse, and arson. Now, if convicted, that first-degree intentional homicide charge is enough to land him in prison for the rest of his life. But today in court, his attorney actually tried to get that homicide charge dismissed saying that there's not enough physical evidence uh -huh. it, but the judge dismissed it prosecutors say <clears throat> back on april 1st on monday oh he looked Anderson like a white supremacist. and robinson were going out for a he looked just like that football player that beat the shit out of that sister that they let go and act like he didn't do nothing wrong when he's beating the shit out of that sister talking about he got cte nigga cte don't make you beat the shit out of people stop nigga they went back to Anderson's home on South 39th Street sometime after 9 o'clock. Prosecutors say it's between that time and 1245 in the morning that Anderson killed her. They say he then dismembered her body and scattered them at different parts around the county. Police found her leg, foot, and other human remains in different areas last week. And police arrested Anderson on April 6th during a traffic stop. Now, we did speak with Robinson's family. They gave us a brief statement after court. Sade was more than a person. She was an angel. Not having her right now is very painful. We need justice for Sade. Me and my family would never be okay. My sister and parents won't stop shaking, and it ain't because they're nervous. Man. Imagine trying to bury your niece with nobody for the service. I need justice for Sade. I have nothing more to say. Man. Okay. Shout out RIP and power and respect and blessings and positive energy go to that family because most families get on there and, and you know get to stop no nigga we don't got shit to say we want justice and that's it that's it we don't want to hear nothing about it and, and, and if they got some prison ties it's been one for you homie straight up and prosecutors did say that there are still parts of Sade's body that are still missing. Today, a judge said Anderson's cash bond at $5 million, but his attorney tried to get that lower to $500,000. That was later dismissed. Anderson is due back in court on April 22nd. Live outside of the Milwaukee County Courthouse, Durante Matthews, Fox 6 News. Durante, I'll throw you one other question, actually, if you don't mind, very quickly here. Uh, we heard from the uncle there. You could hear the pain and anger in his voice. You also spoke to Sade Robinson's mother. What did she have to say after court? So she essentially echoed the same sentiments as the uncle did, how she really wants justice for her daughter. Now, she was in a very understandably emotional state, and a lot of the words that she used are not really appropriate for, for <laughs> television. But in a sense, she's very angry at and uh, What the fuck do y'all think people are going to say when some dominant society member then killed their daughter and dismembered her on some Jeffrey Dahmer shit all over the county? No, they ain't going to be like, oh. We want to pray for that man. No, man, fuck that motherfucker. And I hope he burn in hell. That's what they really probably said. 
And get the fuck out of my face with that bullshit mic and camera. Looking like King Batch. <laughs> and more than anything, she just wants to have her daughter back. You can certainly understand the furor there. Durante Matthews covering this in Milwaukee County for us. Thank you very much. Now, while that was playing out in court, law enforcement officials held a press conference in Wauwatosa detailing <coughs> their investigation, which again began 10 days ago, April 2nd, with the discovery of that leg and also the report that Shade Robinson was missing. And Zoe Chapala joins us now after hearing from the county sheriff. And my thing is, why would you leave a, a leg around? So that could, you did that on purpose. You wanted to get caught. And this might go higher than what we think. Because who does that? You, it, Nothing would have been found. She just would have been a missing person. But you, you come on, man. Then you burn her car. Nah, some, something, something else is going on. From the police chief, there is so much information and detail in the criminal complaint, yet still this gap towards the end, Zoe. What still don't we know? Yeah, and I think that that's just the best way to describe it. You know, I was looking at the criminal complaint and I'm like, wow, this is really detailed. They really have all of this information laid out here for us. And then when I got to page nine, because it was about a 10 page criminal complaint, I realized that there are still a lot more questions than answers at this point. I mean, some of the big things that I think we're still wanting to know is a motive. That is something that we asked the Milwaukee County Sheriff's Office, and that's not something that they can answer at this time. Another thing, too, is we know that Shade Robinson and Maxwell Anderson met because they had they went on their very first date that last Monday night. Um, we don't know how they met. Investigators say that they think that they met at Maxwell's place of work. However, that's not totally confirmed because police are still investigating that. We also know, too, that investigators think that the two met at Anderson's place of work. Again, they say Shade and Maxwell went to the Twisted Fisherman last Monday on their first date and then to Dukes on the Water and then back to Anderson's house. They think that Anderson drove to Warnemont Park around three in the morning where that severed leg was eventually found. Surveillance video shows the car head toward the pump house and a shadowy figure on the beach. And phone records also show Sade's phone at Warnemont Park from about 3 to 4.30 that following morning. Now, we do have confirmation that the severed leg belongs to Sade Robinson. Wow. But what we don't know is if these other remains for sure belong to her. Investigators think that, yes, those human remains and the other body parts that were found do belong to her. But like I said, it's still pending those identification from other uh, different testing resource centers around the county. And then also as well, another big question that we're hoping to learn is when did this happen? Man. How did this happen? And why? I mean, I think a big thing, a big gap in the investigation that we're not finding out is did this happen in the home when they went back to Anderson's house? Yep. Did it happen in the car before he set it on fire? Did it happen at the beach where the leg was found? Those are all questions that we asked the sheriff's office and that they still can't answer at this time because it's a very open investigation and still very fluid. But they do hope to get us that information as soon as they get that information. So we'll keep you updated on that. But for now, in Wauwatosa, Zoe Chapala, Fox 6 News. The answer from Sheriff Ball a number of times to those questions, ongoing investigation. While that continues, so does the legal case now with the preliminary hearing for Maxwell Anderson next scheduled for April 22nd. If you want to read much more about this case in today's major... Man, 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 that is sad. That is sad, man. We got to understand what's going on, man. It's a war out there. Ain't nobody safe. Don't think anybody got your best, in best interest at heart. Don't think that. At all. Because that's not what it's about. Go check out these cases. Go check out this stuff. We already know about OJ, but we got to give proper respect. You know what I'm saying? To OJ. He's one of our great legends. Fuck what they talking about. See, the dominant society works like this. Well, if we don't like them, then you shouldn't like them. Fuck you. Y'all got a building called the F, the, the J. Edgar Hoover's FBI building, knowing he was a cross-dressing white supremacist. Anti-black racist. And y'all got a building named after him, and we got to deal with that shit. So fuck that shit. 
pedophile island and all these people, including Bill Clinton, and we got to respect them. But when it comes to R. Kelly and it comes to Bill Cosby and it comes to our greats, we got to just denigrate them and act like they ain't shit. Elvis Presley and, and Priscilla, Priscilla Presley was 13, 14 years old talking about this, sleeping in, the, in in different beds. Stop. It was that before or after he was, he was touching on that pussy. So I don't want to hear none of that bullshit. See, the rules don't apply to them, but it applies to us. You don't get a chance to have a moral compass over foundational black American business. This is foundational black American business. You don't get a chance to do that. Y'all the most immoral, corrupt, backbiting, uh, discord, uh, discord sowing people on this goddamn planet. As, as, as John Henry Clark said, you tear up every, everywhere you go, you tear it up. So I don't want to hear that bullshit about nothing. So no, you 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 cannot be the moral compass of what the fuck we got going on. So I want to see if they're going to do this same like they did to uh, OJ and fuck with them the whole goddamn time. They going to do that shit to this motherfucking Maxwell, whatever the fuck his name is. They going to do it to him. Up there going on dates, act like he liked that sister knowing he was going to kill her the whole time. Let's let's be mindful and understand. It's a war out there, man. You don't know what the you don't know if somebody was aiding and abetting him. You don't know what the fuck was going on. You don't know if somebody was helping him with that whole situation. Like, look, you're gonna get caught, but it don't matter. You'll be taken care of in prison. Some, some people are willing to do that shit because they don't just that anti-black racism that's in them. You know what I mean? I just, we have to understand this, man. We are we are always the target. I'm telling y'all, we are. You know what I mean? That's why you just got to keep to yourself and do your thing, get the fuck on. When you have these core plantation jobs and you see two dominant society people going at it, don't pick a side. As Dilly Fuller Jr. speaks, and I quote, he said, if two white supremacists are having a disagreement, you don't choose a side unless they're establishing a system of justice. If they're trying to replace that system, racism, white supremacy, and establish a system of justice, fine but if they're just fighting you don't pick a side because all they're fighting about is who's the biggest plantation owner that's why i don't choose sides when dominant society people get into it i just laugh at their ass and keep it moving because this is what the fuck is going on out there remember that and fuck Ron Gold and all them other motherfuckers too. They get on my goddamn nerves, man. Leave that man. Look, they gonna still be making speeches and showing up to court trying to get whatever money they can, man. Fuck them. Man, I'm sick of their asses. Man, they act like OJ was some type of bully. Y'all chose to be around OJ too. OJ wasn't forcing people to be around him. Y'all didn't give a fuck when you... Look. Y'all motherfuckers did not give a fuck as long as OJ was fucking y'all wives and giving y'all money. And then when he wanted to give y'all money and didn't want to fuck y'all wives no more, then it became an issue. Stop. I don't want to hear none of that sucker shit. You got to understand that. They okay with you until you're in a better position than them. Then they start looking at you all crazy and, and why is this a problem? Why is that, man? Fuck that, man. Do what you got to do to survive. But man, hey, go check out R.I.P. to Sade Robinson. The very, very sad story. Those two stories right there, I was sad about OJ because I like OJ. Shit, OJ had me rolling. That motherfucker was like, I want to go back to California. The real killer might be out there. I was like, okay, shit. <laughs> shit. Fuck what y'all talking about. I ain't going back to no motherfucking California. That's where the real killer at, shit. Why y'all up there fucking following me? Man. Motherfucker couldn't even get his own shit back that he won, man. Get the fuck out of here, man. Dominant society always changes the goalposts and doing whatever the fuck they want to do. Now, just like that, what was that dude named Chad Willard that was a football player that was beating the fuck out of that sister talking about he had CTE and all this other sucker shit? Nigga, get your whole ass the fuck up out of here. You just beating the shit out of that woman because you could. Because if that was a white woman and she called police on your ass, your ass would went to prison right away. He went and got him a sister. Like, oh, okay, I beat the shit out. This, this, this a nigga bitch to me. That's what he was thinking. I'm telling you. Man, you got to remember that, man. And this isn't about, just check the pedigree of the people that's around you. Whoever's up under you, check the pedigree. You know what I mean? Straight up. You're like, what, what you mean by that? What I mean by that is check the pedigree. Shit, you want to go, go to date? Go to public place every time. Don't go back to nobody's house. 
You don't know what the fuck they got going on. Yeah, it was a sex dungeon, all right. No, it was a meat packing dungeon where he was like on some Jeffrey Dahmer shit. Remember Jeffrey Dahmer? That black sister was like, hey, it's stinking his apartment, and he is a fucking weirdo. And that motherfucker just kept letting him do it. Man. That Jerry Dahmer store was creepy as a motherfucker. I said, this man, and his parents knew it. They knew he was a nut sending these kids off into society. You talking about black? That's why, I, look, I don't want to hear shit about nobody talking about what black kids ain't doing and black on black crime. And I don't want to hear nothing about none of that shit when y'all the most volatile people on this goddamn fucking landmass. Y'all so goddamn volatile and so spiteful. Y'all let immigrants come over here and, and, and fuck up the country even more. They give black folk what they are owed. That's what tripped me out about the dominant society. You look at them like, so y'all really just going to keep the borders open, just let motherfuckers come over in the droves and give them grants and set-asides so they can go buy houses, do the shit. <clears throat> black folk can't even go buy a motherfucking house because our credit got to be a certain way. Then our job got to be a certain way. Then we got to be on the job for a long period of time. Then we got to send paycheck stubs and this and that and that. And immigrants could just come the fuck over here, set up shop, and do whatever the fuck they want to do and get set aside, start talking shit to niggas. That's why I don't like no immigrants. I don't give a fuck what part of Africa you from. See, when, when a motherfucker say Im immigrants, they think I'm just talking about Latinos. No, I'm talking about all you motherfuckers that are freeloaders. You're here for unearned benefits, motherfucker. That's what you're here for. And I'm tired of my goddamn tax dollars and my ancestors and my family's ancestors building this country for free without repayment, paying for some fucking freeloaders to come over here for unearned benefits. That shit is sucker shit to me. So fuck it. I don't care who the fuck gets offended. Go back to your country and build your shit. Don't come over here get set aside. And that's why fuck the goddamn government and all this other shit. And fuck all this, oh, uh, rising tides, lips are built. That's why 95 crime bill Joe don't know black people fuck with him no more. And that's why Kamala or Kamala Harris is a fucking joke. And nobody's endorsing them anymore. And they're running out of options. And now Mr. Trump is going to get in again. And you're like, well, why is that? Because you ain't giving us no set of sides. They want to sing and, and pass out fucking KFC chicken when it come to niggas, but everybody else gets set of sides. I was having this conversation with this one sister, very intelligent sister. And she was, you know, <clears throat> this is what I learned about black folk too. Before I get out of here, we have very intelligent conversation. But this, I was like, have you read Dr. Claude Anderson's Black Labor White Wealth? No, exactly. So you're just going off what they telling you. Oh, well, I know they, they, they changed this act and that, that, man. Fuck all that. Black folk got Stockholm Syndrome, and we have bonded with our captors. We don't want to think outside of the matrix. We don't want to bend it to our will. We just want to go with what a narrative is being given to us. If you read Black Labor White Wealth, he... He breaks down this system in such a tactician level about what the fuck is going on. We are permanent underclass. I don't want to hear nothing about nothing. That 94 crime bill put over $500,000, $500,000, 500,000 black folk in prison for mandatory minimum shit. And then what they did was they turned around and said, we wanted it. And black folk will echo that shit. So I don't want to hear that shit. We can pull every fact and, fig fact and figure about, oh, well, black men, stop, stop. Stop. Obama didn't do shit for black folk. He's I told this sister, I said, well, Obama came out and said he didn't do enough for black people. And then you start talking about people like, well, you know, his real name is Barry Soro, right? His stepdad was vice president of VP Oil. Motherfuckers be like, damn, for real? Well, where the fuck you think he got that $500,000 to go to school? Obama grew up privileged. He didn't grow up poor. What you think, niggas just wake up in the morning and go to Columbia and go to Harvard and all that? Stop. Stop. That's they man. They just wanted you to think he was for you. That's why you ain't heard shit from Obama and them since. Because they ain't got shit to say. Because they know ain't nobody believing what they saying anymore. That's why a lot of black folks are like, damn, we got a better, we got a better run with the fuck with Trump. That's when you know it's fucked up. When you're like, fuck, man. Might as well just get Trump in there. Because these motherfuckers ain't doing shit. Look at Kamala. Look at Joe Biden. Look at, they don't give a fuck. These politicians don't give a flying fuck. As Dr. Claude Anderson said, you lease or rent these politicians. It's not about liking them. And they ain't doing shit for black folk. And I told that sister, I said, why is it every time it's time for our shit, we don't, it's, we start making up excuses. Oh, well, they, you know, they got to be the president for everybody. But when 
a dominant society is in office, they make sure they're doing shit for white folk. That's why I'm like, no, I don't want to hear none of that sucker shit. None of it. I'm tired of paying taxes and paying the IRS and paying taxes. And then you look up and it's an immigrant fucking over here getting set aside and getting a free good credit. And all this sucker shit. No, fuck all that. Build the goddamn border up. If you're illegal and you're not coming over here legally and paying into, you know what they need to make? You coming to the United States of America illegally or you come legally, you paying a double tax. Or get the fuck on. Man, tired of this shit. We paying for all these people. You can't even stay in California where you live because it's so goddamn high. And, and, and all these immigrant groups is running California, which they report to a dominant society. Vegas the same way. You look up every fucking manager and director position, it's an immigrant running it. Fuck that. Get tired of that shit, man. That's why I don't have time to be fighting black folk when we are fighting other racial groups and they laughing at us because we don't stick together. Man. But anyway, man, that's my time. I'm sorry to go off on that tangent, but like this shit is all relatable. Like it's all fucking relatable. That's why I give the South props. Because ma- majority of the, the you know, people in the South, they <clears throat> there's a, a unwritten rule about just sticking together and handling business. It just is. But anyway, that's my time. Uh, shout out to everybody out there. Hey, man, go check out these stories. RIP to OJ, the legend. Uh, go check out Shade uh, Robinson. RIP to that sister. And much power, love, and respect to her family. Man, hey, enjoy your day. Guilty, nigga. I'm out. <laughs> Peace. <laughs>